the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. So that number one, the first pillar of dominion is our spiritual connection. I'm doing a recap for those who are following online or here. Our spiritual connection. The, the awareness that life is spiritual is, is, is a realization that we must carry for the rest of our lives. In as much as we, we do not advocate a fanatism without purpose, we are, we are not just people who are spiritual alone. We have a body, we have a mind, we relate in a sociological sphere. But we must never confuse, never be embarrassed about your sense of spirituality. That is the foundation of all things. Hallelujah. Out of um, the, the gospel of John, out of the four synoptics, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, every one of them starts with, um, some of them start with a historic perspective. They start, uh, you know, the book of Matthew and all of that. They start giving you history of this and that. This begat this, this begat that. Or others would just start with the exploits of Jesus like Mark put his own account. But John was the one who began tracing it from the realm of the spirit. And he said, in the beginning. Not from the beginning. In the beginning. I don't know how far, but somewhere in the beginning, I can start from there. In the beginning, he said, was the word. And he said, the word was with God. And the word was God. Now, he wants to write... And a, an account of what was happening in the earth. But he had to start with the beginning, God. The same, he says, in the beginning was with the word, the word was with God, and so on and so forth. And then he began to talk about the divinity of God. Then he now got to John the Baptist, and then so on and so forth, and it continued that way. He traced it right to the divinity of God. Never forget this formula. In the beginning, God. In the beginning of your pursuit, God. Not knowledge, God. In the beginning of your career, God. In the beginning of your business, God. In the beginning of politics and government, God. In the beginning of church, God. In the beginning of family, God. If he does not begin, he cannot defend anything there. Because he only becomes omega over what he became alpha over. You cannot invite him somewhere in the middle of the mess and say, Lord, continue with me. He will start afresh because he's a God of patterns. Are we blessed already? So our spiritual connection is very, very important. It is only by God that we rise. The mysterious force behind our rising in as much as we engage the principles that are sociologically accepted that help to sponsor influence and excellence and greatness but we are aware that beyond the things that men will see about us there is a force ask any great man and they will tell you no matter how unspiritual they look in the presence of people they are aware that there is some spiritual support they do not stand pharaoh was not shouting for nothing there was a sponsorship of the gods of Egypt. The Medes and the Persians did not shout for nothing. There were spirits over that territory that empowered the speakings of men. It is a risk to be alone. The Bible already said it is not good for man to be alone. A woman is not the only thing that helps a man's being alone. It is not good for a man to do politics alone. It is not good for a man to do business alone it is not good for a man to start the journey of life alone there has to be a backing the god of heaven who can come as a deliverer a 
as a support. When David stood before Goliath, he said, Goliath, you come to me with your spheres and your bows, but I come to you in a name. I look small, but there is a name. The name of the Lord, the Bible declares, is a strong tower. It says the righteous run to it and they are saved. Hallelujah. Your spiritual connection. Number two. The second pillar of dominion we began yesterday and we'll take it off from there is the power of transformation. Sustaining superior belief systems. That if you ever want to be given an opportunity to represent the counsel of God at the corridors of power, it will take more than just secular education. It will take more than just a well-intentioned heart. That there is a requisite level of transformation that allows you to be able to represent the counsel of God in experience at a global level. And this has nothing to do necessarily with the limitations of background and so on and so forth. There is no excuse. If at all we want to rise to positions of global influence, where the governments of nations, where territories will listen to the counsel of God that comes upon our lips, then we have to trust God to evolve and to change, to metamorphose into superior dimensions of ourselves that will allow us to be worthy of listening to transformation to be able to sustain kingdom perspectives Matthew or Numbers Numbers 13 let's look at Numbers 13 uh, I don't know where we'll stop but maybe just write it let's not read it Numbers 13 25 to 33 this was Moses sending the 12 spies to go and spy the land I want to really walk with time and the Bible says that a few of them came with a report that God calls an evil report, not a bad report. An evil report. Moses, amazing, we went to the land and we saw. So all of them saw, but now they are interpreting what they saw. And some said, we saw truly the land was flowing with milk and honey. But, my God, we saw the sons of Anak, men with six fingers and six toes. We were like grasshoppers. And God was hearing from heaven. And then Caleb and Joshua silenced them and said, let's go up at once. I know what we saw. We are well able. Let's go up at once. What you see. Now, there are many miracles that were performed in the Bible. But there were a set of people that when God saw, he never left them the way they are blind people God was so passionate about the miracle of the opening of the eyes not just the physical opening of the eyes alone because it was a reflection of something in fact the Bible tells us that the primary weapon of Satan so says Apostle Paul is to blind the minds of the people that when Satan comes to attack an individual he does not just inflict he does something to your mind and casts a spell upon that mind so that you no longer can view things I hope you know that you don't just see with your eyes you see with your mind through your eyes so our interpretation about God our interpretation about life, our interpretation about success is a, we, we view from different vistas, lenses that have been given to us from culture, lenses that have been given to us from a, a sociological context that promotes mediocrity and so on and so forth. And so when we converge like this, we allow the Holy Spirit through the word to open us up to superior dimensions that translate us and gives us belief systems that can help us to reign and to do well in life. Are we together? Every society I wrote down here is a reflection of the value system and the beliefs of its people. Every society without exception. The dominant value system the dominant belief system in every society is what controls the people there. In fact, 
Many of you may have heard when we deal with demons and all of this, we talk about a class of demons called familiar spirits. Do you know their operation? The assignment of familiar spirits is to study a territory and to study the dominant mindsets that keep certain people in certain ways and to guard those mindsets to see that transgenerationally those mindsets continue. This is the assignment of those spirits. So if it's a mindset of laziness, they will protect all of the pillars that make for that mindset to continue and they continue to market and transfer it from father to son and then you find out it is the presence of these mindsets that create patterns negative predictable circles so you can see a society for instance that is with predominantly lazy men I can tell you it's not just spirits. There is an ideology that would have been given to them, transferred transgenerationally, that makes the young men there to believe there is no nobility in dignity. So when they receive of that mindset, those spirits now come and build a fortification around that mindset. We call it strongholds. A stronghold is a belief system that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to keep the victim consistently within that circle of thought. So the Bible says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Are we still together? It says to the pulling down of strongholds. Then it says casting down every imagination is the Greek word yetzar, and bringing every thought right to the obedience of christ you are not changed until your beliefs change you may be saved but just having the experience of the new birth may guarantee your eternal destiny but it may not guarantee your relevance in the earth it will take a process called transformation this is why the holy spirit was given to the church Jesus was mentoring the disciples. And then when he gets to John 16, he says, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he says, he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. In fact, when you read Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9, please give it to us. Paul began to mentor the church in Ephesus. And when he started, he, he started by establishing the basis for his apostolic authority. How that he was made a partaker of the fellowship of the mystery. So that everyone who heard him would understand that he was not just bragging. But he was one who had received the privilege of the election of grace. And then when he gets to verse 9, he says this is his mandate. To make all men see. That a man can be given a grace that opens the eyes of blind people. That when you begin to speak to people, you take away the scales that have kept them sometimes for years and for decades. I think for me, one of the greatest deliverance in Africa is understanding the systemic character of God. That the practice of Christianity and the Christian faith that makes everything absolutely up to God no matter what happens we come in with that 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 superstitious illusion that we have no responsibility whatsoever in making things happen on earth and the devil likes that kind of ideology it is well-meaning it is sociologically uh, comforting but it's very destructive and so we refuse to take responsibility over the things that make for greatness. Imagine kicking your car and just allowing it to move by itself without being at the steering to drive it to an expected end. Are we blessed? The time has come. I know that I'm speaking to the men, but it extends to everyone. We must sustain the unashamedness to review the foundational pillars of our belief system. What do I believe and where did it come from? Don't say we, it's been like that. An error can be there for a long time and look like the truth. We must sustain the thoughtfulness to begin to probe the foundation of our belief systems. Not unto rebellion, but unto transformation.
The goal is not so you begin to attack people and say, no, 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 no. The idea is you are demonstrating your, your passion for change. Because our destinies will be a reflection. I told you that the results that we have in our lives are a report card. They are telling us the, the level of growth of our understanding and belief system or otherwise. I love my dear country, Nigeria. I love Africa. And as I have the privilege of taking the message of the kingdom around this nation and this continent, I am amazed at what people think God will do about their lives. I am shocked at the level of irresponsible men who just believe that one day by an act of providence and superstition, their lives will suddenly change and then they will prove to people, I told you God is alive. Please don't be, I hope I'm not too hard. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but we, we have to just get this thing down. Transformation. Until a society upholds belief systems that promote integrity, respect, and honor, gratitude, diligence, humility, these are priceless virtues that, that make every society civil. And you see, I told you that when people act, the problem is not what they did or what they do. The problem is the belief system that informs that. That is what must be corrected. Are we together? I was so touched when our father came and was challenging the men over our children and so on and so forth because the, the narrative we have received in Africa is that the cane is the only way of talking to a child. So if the child does something wrong, he just knows that he just had moments of pain and that's it. And there is no communication. Our mentorship systems are poor in Africa. People are largely left on their own to scrounge their way. The Bible says in Jeremiah 6 and verse 16, it says, stand in the way, right? That ancient part and says, it says, ask. And when you find it that good way, walk ye in it. Our mentorship systems in Africa are very poor. The average young man has a lot of finding out to do about his life. So by the time you are 25, by the time you are 30, you are still confused as to what your life would be about. And then sadly speaking and respectfully so, many loved ones and parents are now hoping their children figure out what this life is about and remedy for their own mistakes. So the average young man in Africa does not have the leverage of wisdom the leverage of experience in a very specific way. And this is something that must be corrected. Do you know what it means to get born again at age 30? It looks young, but that's not an advantage. You've spent 30 years in confusion, gathering all kinds of error in your mind. Now you get born again at age 30 before you argue about the Holy Spirit and receive his ministry. And then if you are fortunate to be under a mentor that now teaches you well, it takes time to know God. It takes time to understand the principles of the kingdom before you start using them. When we give birth to children from age 2, 3, they start going to school immediately. But we delay their salvation till they are 30 and they are 40 and then you... Are we blessed? Transformation. When an arm robber... Now watch this. As we are seated here talking, someone is planning to rob this night. I hope you are aware. Now, let's go into the mind of that thief now by this time. What exactly is he thinking? Because remember, the armed robbery will happen maybe 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. God forbid. We are going to pray against that. But I'm saying right now, someone is sitting quietly in his house. And an ideology is making him believe that you are so, you are so valueless. You do not have anything that you can exchange for a reward. And the only way is to pick up a weapon and go and harass a dear family and try to attack their sacrifice, their rewards for years. Imagine the thinking that convinces a man to actually carry a rifle 
and jump a fence. The same rigor it takes to jump that fence is the same rigor it takes to read a book. And yet he would prefer to go through the risk of the cold. Do you know the level of intelligence it takes to steal? Ideologies. When a young boy stands before his father and mother and says, I'm 18, don't talk to me. You are stupid um, father or you are stupid mother. Forget what the mouth is saying. Think about the mind. Something has been sold. There is a context that has been given. He's, someone has helped him define masculinity. That for you to be rated as a strong man, that, that masculinity is, is, is proportional to rebellion. Society mocks those who are obedient. They look at men who are obedient to parents and the nobility of honor. They say you are weak, you are cheap. They, 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 they make people feel bad for being obedient. The more you are rebellious, the more you are strong-hearted and strong-headed, they say that's excellent. There is a problem, oh. If we do not understand this and rise, there will come a generation that will erode every value that keeps society strong. Hallelujah. And so, the spirit of the Antichrist works this way. It will walk through government of nations. It will walk through policy makers. It will walk through different people to enact programs and principles that create loopholes that continue to encourage these kinds of things. Satan is very long term. He's not thinking five years. He's thinking 15 years. He knows one day those who hold these values will die. So he can't stop them from holding their values but he knows that time will erode them out of the scene. So he would rather call Come to our children and start growing with them. I want to say this respectfully. This is what has happened to the Western nations. Their parents and all their fathers who were doggedly committed to the Christian faith. The devil knew that I can't make mama to backslide at this age. So he said, you know what? I know she will die in 20 years, but I can grow with the child. Now the children are now the presidents and the governors. And we are there wondering how to change. Whoever was there for you when you were rising is the one you will be loyal to at the corridors of power. <laughs> Believers cannot come and want to own a stake in lives they did not invest in. You didn't preach to me when I started my journey. It was an atheist that encouraged me to rise to become a professor. And now I'm sitting as the head of an institute. That institute will be subscribed. It will work as a reflection of my belief system. And now here comes Christians. And we want to just take ownership and have a stake in the life of that man. And he says, where is your history in my life? Transformation. The process that makes you like Christ in experience. Sustaining superior belief systems. Hallelujah. I told you yesterday, when a man beats his wife, the hand is innocent. The hand only obeyed the mind. Something about his belief system, maybe culturally motivated, taught him that when I beat my wife, she will respect me. Every man is a victim of his belief system. Please hear me. Every man when we say respectfully speaking that our society is full of men a combination of both responsible and irres no irresponsible man is irresponsible by default something about his belief system has encouraged him that god will do everything sir the school fees of your children has not been paid it's all right god is faithful i know my god he will show up for me and the man is sitting crossing his legs and not doing anything and just wondering and knowing i know god just wait and see it is dangerous for such prayer to be answered because that error now becomes a stronghold. When God comes as an act of his mercy for the sake of the children, we think it's an endorsement of our carelessness. Are we blessed? The hallmark of masculinity is responsibility.
I'm not a politician. I don't, I don't dabble into political affairs, even though I'm, I'm one person who is very vocal about people of influence. I don't run away from them. They are my friends because they need that, that dimension of kingdom. Uh, but it's amazing how many people cross their legs and expect government to do everything. It's amazing how, by government, I don't just mean federal government, government from their homes. My father, you see a young man of 30 years and he's angry and saying, my father did not give me pocket money. What for God's sake, what, what, what else is the definition of irresponsibility? Now, please, we we'll apologize after the, the, the conference, but, but let's, let's, just, let's just get this thing. Please, don't, 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 I'm not being sarcastic. This is a shake-up. We call it the mandate. Now, imagine, and, and uh, uh, let me encourage, let me encourage blessed people. Being blessed and prosperous is not a cause. Give your children room to understand the nobility of process. Just because a millionaire gave birth to a son does not mean he must become an irresponsible person. There are certain things to be withdrawn from him until he understands the nobility and the honor that comes with process. Sometimes when, when things come too easy and too cheap, they give us an aberrated view of life. It is that impatience that has led to what our young people have today. We want to get everything overnight. It is one of the reasons why we have no honor for great people. Because we are not even interested in their story, their pain, and their history. We've been taught that there is an easier route to carry their 35 years and put it in one month. Favor does not lead to foolishness. Are we blessed? So we watch someone and we say, ah, this man is a millionaire. Most likely he's a thief. And then the challenge is that that man, respectfully speaking, will give his son access to those millions. And the narrative the son will take to his friends is, you see how easy life is. I mean, life is so easy. I don't know why you are trying to look for a job. How much are you earning? 200,000. And he laughs it over with sarcasm. Those his peers will go back and say, whatever it will take to enter this realm, tomorrow's realm today. The law of process. The Bible will often say, according to the time of life. Imagine a woman who just gives birth and you're a doctor and the child just gets up, just jumps and teeth just comes out and he's ready to... No! Luke chapter 2 and verse 54. Very touching statement. And Jesus grew. And Jesus grew. Jesus grew. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus grew. If Jesus grew, everybody must grow. Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. Hallelujah. Transformation. Where do our beliefs come from? Number one, our beliefs come from culture. Our cultural experiences. We come from different parts of the world and every culture sustains a set of values, a set of beliefs. A number of them are kingdom compliant, but many of them have come from tradition, superstition, and interaction with spirits. We must sustain the intelligence to edit the belief systems that we have gotten from culture, referenced to the word of God. And that any one of those belief systems that does not square up with the counsel of God, we must have the unashamedness to drop it. Are we together? Yes. Number two, very quickly, where do our beliefs come from? Our past experiences. The past is wonderful, but it can be dangerous. Chances are that most people, most marriages, most organizations are products of the pain and the past of people. It's wounded people that wound others. Is hurting people that hurt others. People transfer their miseries and begin to look for those to bring that to. Someone comes into a company and he's angry and victimizing everybody and now says, look, I didn't have it easy myself. So what? Are we together now? Our past experiences. Number three, our association. There is no man that outgrows the power of influence. Everybody is being influenced every time, every day. 
There are people who were wonderful people until they met a set of friends, until they met groups. And now we're not just talking of young people. Respectfully, at any age, there are groups and systems and structures and, and relationships that can be pungent to our values. Hallelujah. The man used to be a responsible man, saving money and taking care of his family until he got to a group of friends who are extravagant and lavish and he lost the nobility and the honor of saving and taking care of his family. Love is a command. Association is not. You have the power to choose friends and you have the power to change if and when those relationships are no longer profitable for where God is taking you to. There's no such thing as we're born from the same uh, neighborhood. No. Belief systems. I came from a background that had very well-meaning people. I saw people who were religious and they loved the Lord with all their heart. But I was concerned about the widespread rate of the irresponsibility of the men. Now, I say this lovingly, but I noticed that it was a trend across that horizon that it looked like people didn't seem interested in aspiring to produce a life that was worthy and noble for their families. And it didn't seem like it was, there was any problem. And I traced and I found out it was the imbalance of the evangelical context of Christianity that was received in my region. That's where the problem came from. That when the missionaries came, because most of them would come and go, some of them would come and die. So the scope of the Christianity they gave us, especially around the Middle Belt and the North with, with a bias for my region, um, you know, it was just the fact that, okay, you need to give your life to Christ, be morally sound and make heaven. And that was wonderful. But that was only the part they could bring. But that was not all there was. So the average man who would give his life to Christ and love the Lord and just hold some level of morality felt he was fine. And yet the children are dying. They never had the privilege to go to good schools that would give them the leverage that their peers would have. And we think it was not a problem. Our greatest consolation was the fact that one day, no matter what, life will be over. But if it takes 80 years for that life to be over, you will punish yourself and punish your family. Hallelujah. So a woman could be sick and maybe the husband could say, no problem, don't worry. If God does not heal you, who am I to heal you? And he cannot get up and go to the hospital. See, so some of those ideologies kept endorsing irresponsibility. This is why the pulpit is very powerful. It's a mind control platform. Africa is a very religious continent which makes it easy for our transformation if the leaders and those who are the communicators of those values are sound themselves. Because the average African sits under the mentorship of a spiritual leader of some sort at least once or twice every week. And that means that as men and women of God and as spiritual leaders, we have a responsibility to be contributors to national development by helping to influence the mindset of people. It is my desire and my proposition that a time will come where the great companies in Abuja and this nation will want men from Family Worship Center. Do you know why? Because the mentorship here has already reduced their work. That the average man who comes has been enlightened. Enough. I made up my mind as a man of God that I was not only going to focus on the spiritual development of people. I will prioritize it. But the scope of my mentorship will not end there. It will be wickedness. We must embrace the whole counsel of God. And see that people are not only spiritual, but they rise to become tools. Not only for kingdom come, but for national transformation. Are we together? A transformed mind. A transformed mind. It starts from home. It starts everywhere. He steals a piece of meat and goes cut free. And someone sees him and laughs it over and says, you stubborn child. And you do not know something is growing. That is, that, is, that is a potential leader who will loot and steal the treasury. 
Are we together? There is a lot of honor. People cut corners everywhere. Time to write exam and someone is not around. Another person comes to write the exam for the person and the person is smiling with pride. Now, I'm not, I'm not just trying to be sarcastic. These things are very serious. I'm saying that attacking the individual problems will not solve it. We have to go back to the belief systems. I'm a student of history. And when Adolf Hitler was going to raise a rebellion, one of the things he did was to focus on the mindset of the people. He indoctrinated them and made the Germans believe that they were the most superior race on the earth. It started subliminally until it became a stronghold. And the average German believed that every other nation was under... And this is the same thing that has happened to us in Africa. There is an indoctrination that has made an average African believe I'm a second class citizen. And so we carry that mindset. We, we, we carry a fascia of, of, of boldness. But the truth is that intrinsically, we have not believed that we can rise to become global in scope. Whether in ministry, whether in politics, whether in government, thank God for the individuals from the soil of Nigeria and Africa who have defied this narrative and are showing the world the possibilities that can come from this continent and from this nation. The Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. A superiority mentality is not an arrogant mentality, but that there is a healthy sense of confidence that the difference between any two people is not, is not, is not their linguistic oratory, it's the quality of their minds. That no matter who stands before you, you are only inspired, not intimidated. Because transformation and growth is a possibility at any level. That means what I did not know yesterday, I can know tomorrow. Please say after me, in the name of Jesus. Say it again, in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to be transformed. Our mindsets can limit us. Our mindsets can make us poor. We have all kinds of narratives. Oh, poverty is all right. It makes you calm. It makes you humble. I can tell you that narrative is not only, it's an evil report, like that report of the spies. I'm, not, I'm, I'm trying not to go ahead of myself. But there are many things that we have received. Now, please, don't get angry at um, whatever those following, maybe your pastor in the church you attend. Don't get angry with your parents or the leaders that were not able to give you. They, are not, they did their best with what they knew to do. But you cannot remain at that level. And in this conference, in the name of Jesus, God is shaking off mindsets. I'd like you in one minute, if you can, please lay your hands on your head and say, Father, every belief system that I have received that is not profitable for kingdom come, is not profitable for my spiritual development, and is not profitable for national transformation. In the name of Jesus, I declare that it is pulled down. I declare that it is pulled down. I declare my unwillingness. Hallelujah. That's right. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. I know there's more that's found in you. Regardless my background, this is my commitment. And I will never settle for less. I know there's more that's found in you. In ministry, in business. And I will never settle for less when i know there's more that's found in you please sit down listen i had the privilege to be greatly mentored by dr miles Munro of blessed memory and i pray for an opportunity to stand before him in heaven and say thank you sir that you were born my life is largely a product of his mentorship. 
I thank God for the quality of information that came from him, his materials. The night he died, I was at a conference somewhere in the south-south. And I got up that morning with a text and I was told that this great transformer who has shaped the mindset of nations, he was an advisor to more than 16 presidents, yet a kingdom man. He showed me a dimension of ministry that the scope of my relevance should not end in the pulpit. If I can only talk when I'm holding a mic, then I'm a failure. I should be able to talk to government. I should be able to stand before a parliament and communicate kingdom values intelligently without fanatism. I saw the value of transformation in the life of this great man. And when I was told that morning he had gone to be with the Lord, I sat on my bed and tears came out of my eyes. And I said, Dr. Miles, even though you are dead, you still live in us. And we will become promoters of your ideologies. We will cause the governments of nations to see that Christianity is not a nuisance to civilization. Please listen to me. If there is anything you have seen in the life of this man that stands before you that is noteworthy, it is number one, a product of the grace of God, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, but it is also a product of sustaining superior beliefs. There is no magic about influence and greatness. It is a product of beliefs. Our beliefs are the ladders that we climb to rise to positions of notoriety and power superstitiously wishing that God would just leave. Do you know that there are certain levels of influence if you don't rise to God cannot use you beyond certain levels? Let me give you an example. In the land of Egypt, Joseph had the ability to interpret dreams. He was about the most spiritual man there, but he did not have the influence to execute what God would give him. So God had to make do with the Pharaoh. That's why Pharaoh had the dream. The dream did not come from Satan. It came from Pharaoh because he was the only one who had the influence to make whatever God. God was trying to redeem his people from famine that was coming. But imagine that Joseph was the one who had that dream. What difference would it make in a prison? So your rising is giving God space for his purposes to be established. Look how God had to make do with heathen kings and people in the Bible because they were the only ones who had access to the corridors of power and they could execute his plan and his purpose. Do you know what it means for God to find enlightened people? You see, the excellency of the anointing, by the grace of God, I'm a student of the spirit. And I have learned by experience that the true potential of the anointing is seen when it comes upon an enlightened mind. Enlightenment gives credence and it, it allows the potential. Let me give you an instance. Do you know there are people today carrying certain anointings that many of our fathers of blessed memory had, but those people did not have the opportunity to be enlightened. So we did not see the full scope of what that anointing could do because the anointing is limited to your belief. Now, when an enlightened mind carries that same anointing, it can allow all the multifaceted dimensions of it to find expression. We need to be enlightened. We need to go for knowledge. I submit to you that there is a lot of laziness in our territory. Our passion for entertainment, respectfully speaking, has outweighed our passion for knowledge and the discipline of growth. The average young man is concerned about just enjoying himself, no knowledge. A young man will sleep from, from 8 o'clock till 10 o'clock in the morning. You cannot be great that way. God is not unjust. Are we together? And it's unfortunate for the narrative that has been given, especially for many who want to get into ministry. Because we've been given a narrative like ministry is just a cheap route to success quickly. When you fail in every other area, just be a minister and you can get honorarium, you can get money, you can get tight. It's a dangerous narrative. I told you yesterday that the miraculous will attract multitudes 
but it is your wisdom attracts that attracts kings most kings are not in need do you have what it takes to be able to sit with politicians and talk about the counsel of God and guide them in wisdom and discretion in the Bible there were people who would run to the prophets and say my father give me counsel can we can we be that transformed that people want to sit close to you because the opening of your lips is the effulgence of wisdom can your words be that expensive can it be paid for are we blessed transformation we have to be transformed this church and the anchor men are a product of the level of transformation that they have contended for no wonder god has honored this church with such caliber of men of influence it's not magic and it's not a mistake it's a product of transformation because the same lord is rich unto all before I come to our fathers, please let me talk to every young man here. While sitting down listening to me, enter a covenant with your destiny today at this conference that I will not be small. Amen. You must you make up your mind. For some of you, that may mean avoiding premature manifestation and go back to the drawing room of your destiny and say, I have to start again. The social media sadly has become a place where people market falsehood all around. Rather than sitting down, why fake what can be real? Can I tell you this? I tell you sincerely and with every sense of humility, society was designed to honor those who have really paid the price. Do not think there is no space. There is still space for great people. Young or old alike. For the Bible says, neither do men light a lamp. And put it under a bushel. Do you know why there are very few people who are being celebrated? Because they are, they are truly the few that are paying the price. There's God's justice system. He's the supervisor of the laws he created. If you are truly diligent, I guarantee you, eventually, the world will discover you. Transformation. You have to go back to examine your belief systems. Your belief systems. Why do I feel embarrassed greeting an elderly person? Something about your belief system. Are you seeing that now? Would it be better? People have gotten jobs just for having the character trait of honor. Good afternoon, mommy. Ah, how are you? You are a nice young man. Uh, you are not at work today. Well, mommy, I'm still trusting God. You mean it? See me tomorrow. That's it. Whereas an, another arrogant prayer warrior can be moving around, passing his breakthrough every day. Now, I'm not being sarcastic. No, I'm not. When I stepped into this place, I took out time to honor our mother. I came, I honored our father. Most of you will see me stand here and just greet them and all of that in your mind. You'll say, ah, it's not necessary. Could that be why you are where you are? Have you learned to see that greatness is not cheap? Do you have in your belief system the construction to honor sacrifice? I never see great people and pretend they are not there. Greatness is hard at any level. Are we blessed? Transformation. And I believe we can sustain superior beliefs. Two keys I will give you for transformation. Number one, you want to be transformed you must recognize that your current belief systems are limiting you. An unashamed recognition that your current belief systems may be limiting you. It is true. Do you know, I am so passionate about the areas of ignorance in my life. 
I thank God for what God has done and is doing in my life. But I continue to ask the Lord, expose to me what I do not know. Thank God for what I know and thank God for the result it is producing. But what else do I not know about leadership? What else do I not know about, about um, ministry? What else do I not know about responsibility? Until you become a searcher, you will not find. The Bible says, seek and you shall find. It will not come to you seated. So there has to be a recognition that there are every result that you desire in your life, there is a belief system that controls it. Merely wishing for that result. I want to become a kingdom millionaire so that I can supply resources. Very, very good desire and a very good mandate. But there is a belief system. There is a construction. There is an understanding that sponsors that. The captains of industry are not there as figureheads. In most cases, their sacrifice and their belief systems took them there. And they have the intelligence to defend what God has given them there. So number one, you must recognize the need and you must keep that need ever before you. Do not allow any level of success to peg you. Number two, you must contend for quality information from the life of those who have results. When you want to become transformed, you must keep biases aside. Because you will be forced to read material sometimes of people you do not like. But if they have the results that you desire and the results are kingdom compliant, then you must drop your ego and get it. Oh, I don't like this professor. I don't like this author. I don't like this commentary. I don't like this, 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 this dissertation. I don't know who. You have to just submit yourself and listen. Hallelujah. When you go to a very good restaurant to eat, you don't say, who cooked this food? When you, the person who cooked it is, is, is almost none of your business. You just see the presentation, you like it, and you can eat or bring your guests. That's how it is. Every result is governed by a belief system. Apostle, I want to become an exceptional. I notice my company has been nose diving. I once was doing well, but things are not working well. I understand and we are going to pray. But much more than just prophetically speaking, there is a belief system that must be introduced into your understanding from a corporate standpoint. It may mean going to study other related companies to find out how they are thriving through storms. Are we together now? It may be that you, you, you may need to be part of other superior associations that are profitable. There are many steps to take. But it starts when you realize that you must grow. I don't only study the Bible. I study relevant materials that are kingdom compliant. Because it's not only Christians I'm talking to. It is my goal to be able to talk to any class of people and communicate the intelligence of the kingdom from a psychological standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint, from an intellectual standpoint, from a sociological standpoint. I want to give God as much space as he can find in my life to be glorified. And I will not limit him with my arrogance and my ego. Are you willing to go that far? If we came for this conference to be transformed, then here is something that is blessing us. Transformation. You are a pastor, you are a man of God here following online. I beg you in the name of Jesus, please sit down and study. Please sit down and study. Please sit down and study. Just waiting for invitation and waiting for people to clap for you for nothing. Human beings are not stupid. Not everybody is a fool. People will not invest time and hours and their reputation to sit down and hear nonsense. No. We must trust God for grace. The grace that gives us the intelligence to speak to kings. When you serve kings, you will receive the reward of kings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Transformation. Buy the truth. Sell it not. Buy the truth. Reduce recharge card and buy books. Reduce excessive clothes and buy materials for heaven's sake. 
Sit down. When people are snoring, you are praying. Lord, I know that my world will hear me and it is for the sake of your glory. Sleep, slumber, wait. I will attend to you in the future. For now, there is a generation that wants to hear God's counsel in my lips. And while you are saying that, God, who is a supervisor of his laws, is watching you where you are. I made up my mind as a personal commitment that every area the Lord would want me to be relevant, whether it is in ministry, in leadership, whatever area, I will strive to get to the zenith of my competence. It is still my aspiration and I am honored to see the fruit of the little that I've done so far. But I know there's more that's found in you. Refuse to settle for less. Don't be as we call it a local champion. Compare yourself with mediocres within your circle and clap for yourself to be the greatest among them. You have to begin to benchmark your success from a global reference. Is God speaking to us? Let's rush to the third key. Are we blessed so far? What is the third killer of dominion? It's called value and productivity. The third pillar of dominion, value and productivity. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 6. This was the first mandate given to man from scripture. The Bible says, and God said, Genesis 1 and verse 26. 26. It says, and God said, let us make man. Genesis 1, 26. Thank you. Let us make man. The word God there is Eloha, the singular. Elohim is plural. And God said, let us make man in our image, our karagma, our character, and after our likeness, our functionality. So let him think like us. Let him have our sense of intuitiveness. But then let him behave also. Let him function like us. And the Bible says, let him have dominion, sovereign control over all of these realms. Go to verse 28. 28. And God blessed them and said, it's an instruction. Number one, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful does not mean have children alone. Be fruitful means be productive. Are we together? Number two, multiply. Number three, replenish. And then subdue. So dominion has to do with being fruitful, multiplying, replenishing, and then subduing. Hallelujah. Very, very powerful. One more scripture. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4. Productivity and value. The honor of diligence. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4. It matters that we become a people who understand the power of value. He becometh poor, the Bible says, that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich please look at me i submit to you in the name of honesty that anybody who does not strive to be competent and valuable in today's world will be ready to sweep the floor of life are we together what does it mean to be valuable your value is a measure of your usefulness usefulness to god usefulness to society your value is a measure of your usefulness. Productivity, please listen. Productivity is the ability to develop your value to a point where it becomes needed and useful. Turning it into products and services that can be packaged with excellence and serve to a targeted consumer base. This is productivity. It's good to be valuable, but don't just stop there. There are many people with potentials. You hear us talk a lot about potentials. Nobody is rewarded for having potentials. You are commended for having potentials, but your reward is based on your productivity. Nigeria is full of ideas. 
Nigeria is full of value, full of potentials. But you're, you begin to live a rewarded life to the degree to which you allow yourself to metamorphose to a point where your products, your value now is now translated. And by products and services, I'm not necessarily just talking about business in its, in its um, the generic form. Products and services, intellectually, whatever it is that you serve with excellence. productivity productivity proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16 the bible says the gift of a man make it room for him i wish i had time and we were not restrained by the covid i would have given you an illustration i usually would line people here and show you that there's no space but the bible does not say the gift of a man gives him his space there is no space anywhere your gift makes room. It pushes people until your space is created. That illusion that my place is there waiting for me is, is, just, is just sociological comfort. There is no space anywhere. It is your gift that allocates your portion. The gift of a man. The gift there does not just mean endowment from heaven because spiritual people will now say, you see, it's not me. Mm -mm. The value of a man the value of a man developed and refined not just raw like that people congratulate you for discovery but this they, they reward you when you refine it apostle i can cook congratulations can kings eat your food and it's just a talent within me i don't know it's, it came by itself god honored you with his mercy you did not develop it. He gave unto one five talent. He gave unto one two. When he came back and met them still looking at it like that, he said, you are an unprofitable servant. That means whatever God gives you, he should not meet it the way he gave you. Hallelujah. Please make up your mind that I will be diligent. In this conference, we kill the spirit of laziness in the name of Jesus. Mental laziness, physical laziness, any and all kinds of laziness. Make up your mind that I will be diligent. I will be diligent. Don't sit down and envy people who are rising and get angry and wish they fall to comfort you. No. Just trust God for grace to continue to contend. Hallelujah. Productivity and value vetoes tribal limitations. Productivity and value limits gender, whatever kind of gender issues in society. Except you do not find exceptional people. You will watch systems and structures bow and crumble to allow them rise. This is true. Hallelujah. Make up your mind that you are going to be valuable. Let me show you one scripture. First Kings chapter 7. We'll read from verse 13 and 14. Are you getting blessed? First Kings chapter 7 from verse 13 and 14. First Kings 7 from verse 13. Now watch this. This was the building of the temple of Solomon. Solomon was building a temple for the Lord and then he was trying to get all the human resources that will be part of that temple. I hope you know he wanted to give God the best. Now, let me show you how kings work because we are talking of influence. He says, and King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. So he fetched a man called Hiram. Now look at the background. I love the Bible. It will go back and tell you the background of that person. What happened that vetoed this background? The Bible says Hiram was a what? A widow's son. That means he lost his dad. An unfavorable background. And of the tribe of Naphtali, his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. And he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to walk in all works of brass. And the king came to... And he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. So what makes a widow's son to sit down and say, I do not just want to serve mean men. One day King Solomon will send for me 
and that guy continued to rise to be diligent, to be competent, to be productive. And the news of his value got to the ear of Solomon. And Solomon said, send for him. There are people in this country, I submit to you, who cannot go out of job for up to two months. They are too competent to be ignored. I know people in this nation, respectfully speaking, who are working in three places at their terms because they literally are the heart of that company. If they cough, the company will buy a pharmacy, not a drug. Why must you think about me when you are reducing people? Why should I be the victim of situations and circumstances? Make up your mind. Mediocrity is dangerous. I am telling you this. There is no group for mediocrity. It looks like there is a group till trouble comes. And you find out that there are only two groups. Complete failures or extremely competent people. Mediocrity allows you to vacillate around the corridors of both failures and successful people. And you may flatter yourself for many years thinking you are successful or you are a failure. But when the stakes are down, you will find out that you are either extremely competent or you are a complete failure. Make up your mind. Be valuable. For some of you, this may mean taking certifications and taking trainings go for it for some of you this will mean buying certain books go for it some of you this may mean furthering your studies go for it for some of you this may mean creating private mentorship sessions with exceptional people go for it for some of you this may mean making yourself the students of knowledge for a long time go for it we are not called to do everything, but we are called to excel in that one area. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To excel in that one area. I made up my mind as a man of God, and, and, and I'll say this humorously, I made up my mind that by the grace of God, I will never stand on any man's pulpit and preach. And afterwards, they just clap and say, wow, that was nice. That's the door. Just go out and uh, one day by the grace of God, in the name of the Lord, as, as our paths cross again. No. I found out that there's no traffic with the stars. There is enough space. And do you know from anywhere you stand in the world, you see the stars. I may not see what is happening somewhere in my Tama right now. Because my view cannot get there. But when it rises to the cloud, everybody can see it. You want to be seen by everybody? Don't pressure them to see you where you are. There are too many obstructions on the ground. Rise. <laughs> Hallelujah. I challenge the men in this great church both young and old, it's time to have a signature of competence within this assembly and from this assembly to this city and this nation. There is always room for more. In politics, in government, it doesn't matter what area. And by the way, let me respond to something that our mother was trying to say yesterday. I believe Christians can and should go into politics. I believe it. Absolutely. I believe Christians can and should go into business. Many of you have heard, I'm sure, of the concept of the seven mountains. Absolutely, it should be there. You see, dominion over a territory is based on very defined structures. They are not more than seven. Number one, let me give it to us. The first mountain, mountain stock of spheres of influence, according to Micah chapter 4. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1. You may want to write that down. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1. The Bible says, it shall come to pass in the last days. Please give it to us. That the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. And it shall be exalted above the hills. And the Bible says, all people, not Christians, all people shall flow to it. Verse 2. And many nations shall come and say, come, let us go up to family worship center and to the house of the God of Jacob for he will what? 
teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. For the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And so we know that there are seven mountains that control the activities of men on earth. Let me try to run them. I hope I remember all of them. Number one is called the mountain of religion. That is where the spiritual conviction of a territory is shaped in. Every territory has some sort of religious loyalty and religious affiliation. And there are people, in our case now, we call them pastors, we call them priests, and so on and so forth. They are mandated to shape the religious conviction of a territory. Number two, the mountain of family. Our father did enormous justice to that. Every arm robber came from somewhere. Every troublemaker came from somewhere. Are we together? And so it matters if we can salvage the destinies of people at that family unit, then we can be able to project a culture in society that brings glory to the name of the Lord. Family is very, very important. Very important. Number three, the mountain of education. This is where the intellectual convictions of people are being shaped. It is very important. Did you know that most of our children spend a major part of their life opening their spirits to their teachers for a very long time? Walking by the 63-4 system. Imagine the amount of time in a young man's life uh, committed to listening to another voice. And it matters what we listen to. Hallelujah. It is the reason why we, we continue to trust God that God will grant grace that our schools will be model places that you can trust the, the kind of training that your child is receiving. Not just the secular curriculum, but inculcating these values also. Because the, the, the subject is not the only thing the child is learning. The child is also learning the attitude of his teacher. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's important. Education. Very important. Number what now? Number four. The mountain of politics and governance. It is my prayer that God will raise spirit-filled, anointed people, but intelligent people too. Most, I have observed respectfully speaking over the years, that most people who want to get into politics, who are of Christian convictions, do not stay to pay the price to understand the wisdom of operating in the cosmos. And so they carry the ideology of church and believe that the sphere of politics is like a Christian praying in tongues all the time. And they meet a rude shock. I've had the honor and the privilege of talking with a lot of politicians. And I can tell you, for many of them who are people of God, they think spirituality is always mentioning the name of Jesus in secular places. Not necessarily so. We're talking of having a kingdom sense. But look at Daniel. Daniel reigned through the dispensation of three kings and none of them could do without him. And yet his convictions remained. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So it is important. I believe that believers should join politics. But I will tell you sincerely, if believers join politics just with the mindset of church, they are going to be in trouble. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the mindset of church, but there has to be that wisdom of being as sheep among wolves and being as wise as serpents the wisdom of living in the cosmos is different because not all men have faith there was a time that it was not paul's anointing that defended him it was his intellectual prowess he needed to outsource certain intelligence from the archives of the people within the territory so i challenge politicians and i pray that god will put it in the heart of someone to be able to have mentorship institutes for people who are prospective politicians so that right from the infancy of their ambition they begin to be mentored a non-partisan platform that begins to build people inculcating in them the mindset of leadership and governance
Many, many of the, 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 I know that there are a few institutes here and there that may seem to talk about that, but now we're, we're talking of dealing with things from a kingdom perspective. Are we blessed? Politics and governance. One policy can frustrate your serving God forever. Just one. You can fast all you can, roll on the ground, but one single policy. Was it not because there came another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph? That was the beginning of the trauma and the captivity of the Israelites in Egypt. Joseph rose to a point of notoriety and saved his father and his brothers from hunger. And they came and lived in Goshen. And the Bible says that God honored, God honored um, um, Joseph so much. And he had the opportunity to marry the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On. And then he became a great person. A name was given to him. And he ruled in justice and power. And God's people were preserved. Hadassah, the lady who we call Esther, it was her rising to the place of power that saved the Jews. Otherwise, there was a man there called Haman. Haman was not even a king. Haman was someone in the system who had an agenda to annihilate the Jews. But he took an Esther. Sometimes it does not take weapons. It just takes influence. The influence enough to be in the corridors of power. Please pray for politicians, especially those who are of the Christian faith, and encourage them. Encourage them. Are we blessed? Number five. Thank you. The mountain of arts and entertainment. This is where our idea about success and the celebration of it comes. When someone wins and opens a bottle of champagne and pours it on his head, you see your little child will go and carry a bottle of malt and pour on his own head too. It's called influence. The child is being mentored subliminally that you celebrate success by extravagance. And you will think this is just a little boy until you see what he does with your car. Until you see what he does with whatever it is that God has given you. It is important Today, respectfully speaking, we have all kinds of narratives about success. And it came because the mountain of arts and entertainment has cultured us into thinking that the more expensive you are, the more successful you are. The more outspoken you are over several things, the more, you know, we have all kinds of ideas. There needs to be people there who God will help them and when they are celebrities and the whole world looks at them, they can point them to Jesus and said, I'm not ashamed of declaring. I've always said this. Imagine if Michael Jackson said Jesus is Lord, even by mistake, he would have won more souls than many crusades put together. Influence is powerful. Do not, do not ignore the effect of the words and the life of a great man on many you will be surprised to know how much people are being influenced one day someone will stand and break his head in the front of people and you'll be surprised how many other people will break their heads and while you are laughing and say this is sarcastic you will be influence is powerful people will do what they see done in the life of great people that's why god must Take a lot of people who are his people to the position of greatness so they can demonstrate to the world how to celebrate from a kingdom standpoint. Hallelujah. By the time a man is being celebrated and the whole world is looking at him and waiting for what he will say and all his business associates and all the people within his sphere of influence, they are standing and watching and he tells them, let me show you how we celebrate God in this kingdom. We do it on our knees. Lord, you are the giver of every good thing. You cannot deny his success because the results are there. And so you will not know when you too, you will join on your knees. You were not supposed to kneel down, but his success forces your knees to touch the ground. Arts and entertainment. And then the last is the mountain of finance. Or media, really. The mind control system. 
you can hear one thing from a five minutes video that will take you two years of praying and fasting and deliverance to get out of your mind <laughs> let me tell you a humorous story my i hope i hope he's not listening to my father and my mom they are still alive and i'm just hoping he's not listening to you know one day my father was watching a program it was a health program and they were saying something about the disadvantage of was it cabbage or something and my father just called my mother and said i'm hearing that uh, something can happen to cabbage that can kill and i said ah mind control systems this is a man that has eaten cabbage for how many decades <laughs> And now just, uh, are you getting, are you getting it? Take it as a joke. But now someone is in five minutes just saying something that came from a research and that's the end of it. Mind control systems. <laughs> Hallelujah. The last is the mountain of finance. This mountain is very peculiar because it controls other mountains. All other mountains need the products from this one. Our world today is economically driven. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it's so. Proverbs 22 and verse 2, and then also verse 7. The Bible says, the rich and the poor live together. It says, God is the maker of them all. Very, very frustrating statement. Why didn't he just say men live together and God made them? What sort of stratification is this? Very, very insulting, ego stinging statement. The rich and the poor, they live together. And then he says, God is the maker of them all. He never said God made them so. God made men and they stratified themselves. But that is not even the disturbing verse. Five verses later, verse seven. Then the Bible tells us, let's go to verse seven, please. It says, Is it verse 7? Please look. Huh? No, no, same scripture, 22 and verse 7. Read it if you're a Christian. One, two, read. Influence now. Uh huh. Hmm. The rich, anybody, will rule over the poor, anybody. The rich. So there is a relationship between wealth and dominion. The rich ruleth. The rich, look at the first three words. The rich ruleth. Leave the rest, just focus on the first three words. The rich ruleth. There is a relationship between the corridors of power and access to resources. Find a way of believing. Let's not feel uncomfortable about it. Remember we said kingdom now. For as long as believers keep being poor, mommy, there is a real problem. And when I talk of prosperity, I'm not talking of money to buy suits. No, no, no. If the only thing you have is money, you are not very wealthy. We're talking of access. We're talking of influence. But we're also talking of resources. The name of Jesus is very heavy. It takes resources to lift it very heavy as the anchor men's fellowship only god knows what he would have taken to put this program together only god knows it takes resources to train your child in a good school so that he's not corrupted by by the neglect that comes from the carelessness of you know many 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 uh, uh, platforms, educational platforms. There is a relationship between resources and peace. Yes, sir. When Jesus, when Jesus was preaching in a crusade, the tribute collectors came. Is that true? So every time you are serving the kingdom, who will come? The tribute collectors. And they came and said, you are preaching here and you've not paid tax. And Jesus said, mm -mm. Give to Caesar what belongs. I'm showing you how to be a peacemaker. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. So a peacemaker is one who has enough resources to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. 
Many believers have ignored it. Rent issue and house issue can erode your prayer life more than you know. You will be, you will be shocked and surprised that you are praying and you, can, you even forget that you are talking to God. These are believers in the name of honesty. Let us be very, very sincere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God forbid, but there are people who have had issues with their health. And the amount that they spent within one month was probably someone's bill for a lifetime. Satan knows that whoever controls the resources makes the rules. We must trust God for grace to be able to rise to that position where he will grant us an opportunity to serve his purposes. Seven mountains. Let me just talk on one more area and we're done. Is that fine? So we spoke on our spiritual connection, transformation, diligence. Please be diligent in the name of Jesus. Make up your mind. Don't sit down wishing for resources to come. Don't sit down wishing to rise to a position of notoriety by default. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkanakata branda katekatos. Kete branda katapa kotos koto prekateke nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.